What's up, guys? This is Tom with Stocked Up. The markets are definitely going to be volatile tonight. Um, Trump is set to speak at 9 p.m. Eastern time. He's going to set his plan on the coronavirus. Um, I know he's set Mike um, Mike Pence in charge, but the thing is, is that the market's still going down, and he needs to readdress the nation because he met with Wall Street executives and banking exe executives, and he might do something where he's going to um, give some tax relief or something like that, and that's going to be some very good news for us. But there was some bad news about a war that um, did come out today that I saw. Um, not a war, but uh, the U.S. military base did get hit with some rockets, and uh, two Americans were killed, and one British uh, national was killed. Uh, it said that it was uh, coalition troops, so it was not directly U.S. troops, I do not believe. But um, if it did directly hit a U.S. base, I'm surprised that it has not affected the markets yet, because ever since futures opened, the markets just went up, and I would assumed that the markets would have went down a little bit. But oil um, has went up ever since the market opened, which is very good, um, and the market's pretty much following oil right now. Keep in mind, I do not see any more articles out, but I um, this is CNN reporting this, and they are reporting that um, pretty much that the U.S. will go after the perpetrators inside Iraq, and that that's a def um, defense official who told CNN that. Um, so that's pretty much, um, you know, it's pretty much saying that we're definitely going to retaliate. And uh, the thing is that the the attack happened March 11th at 7:35 p.m. So um, I believe it's like around 11 p.m. there now. So we are a couple hours behind now. But uh, you can definitely see that there's there was some damage here. Here's some pictures. And, um, you know, you can go ahead and read the report for yourself. I'll have it in the link below. Um, it's, it's a CNN report. But um, like I said, there is no other reports out on it yet. And I cannot tell you why. But um, I found out about it today because people in the military contacted me pretty much as soon as it happened. And I was just letting people know right away. So right now, my opinions are very mixed on the market, obviously, because Trump is going to speak tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time, and that's whenever I expect the market to really start moving, depending on what he says. And I believe he's going to try to bring some good news to the table because the markets have just been falling like nonstop. But you can see that the markets still have not broken the lows yet. Uh, we pretty much double bottom now. So it's pretty much like if we double bottomed and we start breaking above the 100, I believe we're going to start going up here. And pretty much, I believe if he could deliver some good news, we'll just see some nice bullish candles and we'll break right through but if not I, I think well we might bounce it and then uh, head down tomorrow again and break this low but if we break this low I think we could definitely see a lot lower levels down towards 2600 or more as far as oil goes same thing um, we're definitely looking for news regarding OPEC re regarding um, oil outputs by the US and different things like that um, we're always waiting for different news with oil but another thing is uh, the military news like I said there was that um, thing that happened in the Middle East where two Americans died and one British national got killed. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if it was a um, U.S. military base exactly, but um, I know that there were U.S. military people in there and two of us died. And like I said, uh, we are definitely going to be going after them again. And that's something that's going to, uh, I believe, rock the markets if we start to do that. And I think that Trump may address that tonight as well because that's something that should be um, re reported on very heavily. But for some reason, Fox News is not reporting on that right now because every other time that there's been a U.S. death or um, even an attack on a base or anything, uh, the markets have went haywire and people went crazy. But right now it looks like the coronavirus news is overtaking that. But uh, I, I believe that people will start reporting on it. Tonight during the speech, I would definitely have a setup kind of like this on your uh, thinkorswim platform. To get to this, all you have to do is go to charts up here. Then all you have to do is just click um, your little grid over here. And you'll just select two squares. So originally you have one square here. And then you just select it and make it two squares. And then this will make your second grid here. And then you can just type in anything you want. So I type in slash CL, which is crude oil. And then it puts it on a five minute chart for me for some reason. So I throw it on a 180 day, 15 minute which is my favorite time frame. And then we can just go ahead and see this here, how it dropped down 20% overnight on Sunday. And now we need a catalyst to get it to go up. And hopefully this military catalyst is what will help it rise back up. And maybe oil going up will also help the markets go up because a lot of the U.S. markets deal in oil as well. I would not take this war news too seriously yet because the markets have not reacted too much to it. The markets are kind of starting to go down now, which is what more of um, what I have expected from this. But oil would definitely, I, I believe, go up from this news. Um, it could go down, but I, I would assume it would go up over this news because oil in the past has always went up during um, bad times, like 2008, for example. Oil almost hit you know $120 a barrel, and that's whenever gasoline was like $3.50 a gallon.
So the moral of the story is the news does not always dictate what happens, but most of the time it does. And the thing is, is this news is only reported on one news source so far. And if it starts getting uh, reported all over the place, that's whenever I think that we'll see uh, the market start going down. But as of right now, um, it's not a headline anywhere anymore. So I think that they might be trying to suppress that news because that'd be pretty bad news. And, I, and then obviously they want the markets to kind of go up. One stock that keeps looking better and better for me is just Bank of America. If you would have bought this a few days ago, you could have definitely day traded this quite a few times and made quite a bit of money off of it. Um, I am I am currently in long term at twenty two seventy eight. I believe is my share price. Um, I averaged in, so this is my first time buying it. So um, I will average in again. So if it falls a lot lower, I will average in very very low. If not, I might average in right right here around 24 25 as we start to head back up towards the 30 and 35 levels that i'm going to sell out at on it but this is a stock i'm going to be holding long term so like i said i'm averaging in so um if the market does go down then i always have the option to buy back in whenever the markets are haywire like this and you're trying to buy in long term very very low um, you need to be very, very careful because um, you don't want to put all of your money into one spot. What you want to do is you want to definitely average in because you don't know when the market's going to keep going down. You can see obviously it was at 35 up here and it falls down. Well, let's see. Let me do this so we can actually see the percentage here. Now we can see that it's fallen down about 37%, 36% so far, and that's a pretty steep drop in the Bank of America, but it's fallen 50% plus in the past, and it could keep going down. So if it does fall down to 16, then we could rebuy at 16, and then our average price will be be about be around 18 or 19 dollars a share. Now you don't want to put all of your money in it right now because the market is so volatile. But if you're someone looking to get in long term, you could start averaging in because it's dropped so much that it could start popping up anytime. And you could do it on any stock. It doesn't have to be Bank of America. It could be a stock like NVIDIA, although NVIDIA is really close to the 100 SMA, so that's a very good time to average in. They could drop back down to the 1,000. Um, some more could be AMD maybe because they're, they're always hot. They're right on the 100 as well. They could start popping back up towards 60 anytime uh, with some good news with China or anything like that. And then some more stocks are just like Tesla. Uh, they're another one that's fallen significantly. You could average in there, but I would not average in the Tesla. That's way too high in my opinion. Um, one could be Netflix. That's another good one. They are a little high as well. Um, AT&T, they, they're definitely a good one to start averaging into. A very good long-term outlook for them. Leggett and Platt is very, very low. You could average into them. Ford, you could average into them, but um, keep in mind Ford. I do not like Ford too much. I used to like them, but the thing is, is that their company outlook's just so terrible and they just keep falling. Um, I did trade them here and I, I got a nice little uptrend and I sold for about 8%. And again, I sold it for about 20% here, but I did end up losing about 10% whenever it gapped down right here. So that was a pretty bad loss for, that I ended up taking. But um, Ford, I don't, I don't believe uh, their company outlook is too good. They quit making... Uh, cars and everything like that so they're only making like suvs in the united states so that's not too appealing anymore um they whenever they were making the ford focuses and the fusions a lot uh it was a lot better but now they're not even doing that so uh really i think ford is definitely um trying to restructure their company but it will take a few years for it to pan out but if you did want to start averaging in you could but that'd be a very very long outlook i know a lot of people look at ford that's why i wanted to address it so as of right now, I pretty much believe the market is in a good point to start averaging in on stocks long term. I do not believe it's at a point yet where you can start going all out and buying in completely. Once we see some nice uptrends, we can start buying in completely. But right now, I would just stay with averaging in. Maybe start with 25% increments. So your first average in should be a 25% increment. And then maybe buy another 25% whenever you think it's at a low and then buy another 25% as it's going up, and then another 25% once you've really confirmed that it's going up. So that's how you, I would uh, average it in here. And, th th and that's something that will help you um, a lot with very, very long-term investments because you can average in over the long term, and that'll just help you because your money is not sitting in there losing for six months. You're averaging in and getting in a lower price so that as it goes up over the long term, you will make um, a higher percentage gain rather than rather than buying in Ford here at eight dollars whenever it dropped 
you could have bought in with a 25% position at eight bucks, another 25% position down here at six bucks, and then another 25% position at four bucks, and your price would be around 650. And then if you bought in another 25% position around 550, your price might drop down to 580. And then if Ford keeps going up and it comes back up to eight bucks, then you're up a, a very significant amount, about you know 60%, which is very very good for a stock like Ford, considering how big of a company they are and how many cars they have out on the streets. Whether you agree or disagree with averaging in right now or not, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. This has been Tom, guys. Have a great night.